I love the Word of God. Oh, you know, I'm saying that to just get you all stirred up so you can do the same thing, okay? So let's, and, and I hope you are. Hebrews, let's go to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews 12. I want to begin reading this because I think it's so important that we understand what really keeps our mind healthy. So Hebrews 12, verse 1, 2, and 3. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, meaning the cloud of witnesses of Hebrews 11, because that's what it means, because he just gave us those witnesses of Hebrews 11, these amazing people of faith. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Now, he's, he's giving us the secret now. Looking unto Jesus, mwah, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame that set and is set down, despising, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the, of the throne of God. Now this is so powerful. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners. The word contradictions means hostility of sinners against himself. Lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. So many people today are fainting in their minds. What's the secret? Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Now watch what he did. Who for the joy that was set before him, ah, he was seeing the joy. He was seeing his church. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. You know, the Lord, our precious Lord, was hanging on the cross naked. People don't realize that. Covered with spittle and blood. Despising the shame. How did he do it? It says, because... For the joy that was set before him, the joy that was set before him, meaning mentally he was seeing his church and mentally he was looking ahead. That's why he kept his sanity. That's how he did it. That's why his mind was joyful. When he was on the cross, he saw the joy set before him. Now, who can do this? Think about this. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such hostility while he was on the cross of sinners against himself lest you be weird and faint in your mind you have not yet resisted unto blood striving against him which means he did not us if the lord could do it we can do it if he could be on that cross think about the pain the torment think about his body torn up and broken Think about being on a cross for six hours and having, with every breath, having to lift your body up where your lungs were filling with liquid and blood. And sinners, hostile sinners, mocking you. How can you keep a healthy mind if you're on a cross? 
You're not, okay? I'm trying to make it simple for you. None of us are, are on a cross right now. None of us are having to pull our body up and down to breathe. And think about that his back was to, so torn up by the whips, it was rubbing against that wood for six hours. It says none was so marred like the Lord, his face and body so disfigured. Here is the Lord with his, a disfigured body and a healthy mind on the cross. And he says in verse 4, you, you haven't yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Think about what that must have been like in Gethsemane when the Lord knew he was about to take upon himself our sin that he had never experienced before. Now he kept his mind completely at peace. In fact, joyful. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross and the shame of the cross. So how do we do it? Quite simple, like he did it. We look ahead. We don't look at the present. We look ahead. And our minds are quite a machine. You know, in, uh, Proverbs, in Proverbs 23, verse 7, in fact, let's, let's read it because I think it's so important that we look at what it says before that because we all know as, as he think is in his heart so easy. But let, let's, let's look at the, we're going to look at verse 6 before that. It says, don't eat the bread of him that hath an evil eye. Somebody that has an evil eye, an evil life. Don't desire his dainties, his meats. Because as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. He says, eat and drink to you, but his heart is not with you. So when we read this portion, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. What it's really saying is, as he thinketh in his breathing, if you look at the word heart in Hebrew, it doesn't mean heart. It means his mental breathing, his bodily breathing. So as he's thinking in his brain, in his breathing, in his being, he is. Because he says one thing and thinks another thing. So he says to you, eat and drink, but his heart is now with you. So basically what this is saying is quite powerful. And, and, and I'm going to put it like this. You are not what you think you are, but what you think you are. I'm going to say it again. You are not what you think you are, but what you think dash you are so so what it really says is what you think you become what you think you become what you think you are what you think your life becomes what you think jesus on the cross is thinking the church he was joyful looking at the church and the joy that was set before him now, how do, we, how do we get there? Because our minds are, just think about uh, seed plots, like a plot you sow seed in, a, in, a, in, in some ground. So the mind is the seed plots of our lives. They are the ground in which seed is sown. So our mind is the seed ground of our life. That's what I sow. This is where everything starts. So when I sow a thought, I reap an act. When I sow an act, I reap a habit. 
When I sow a habit, I reap a character. And when I sow a character, I reap a destiny. I'm going to repeat that. You need to write it down. In fact, put it right there so I can see it on the comments. When I sow a thought, what do I reap? I reap an act. So, I sow a thought, I think something, and I act. I act my thought. Now, when I sow an act, the minute I act it, I reap a habit. I keep doing it. When I sow that habit, if I keep doing it, it becomes my character. I reap a character. And if I sow my character, if I sow a character, I reap what? My destiny. So, it all begins with what? A thought. So when you think ahead, when you think heavenly, you act heavenly. Your habits become heavenly. Your character becomes heavenly. Your destiny becomes heavenly. It all begins with a thought because the mind is the seed plot of the life. The mind is the seed ground of your life. Everything begins with your mind. Everything starts with your thoughts. Did you write it down, you sweet people? Just in case. If you sow a thought, you reap an act. If you sow an act, you reap a habit. If you sow a habit, you reap a character. If you sow a character, what do you reap? Destiny. You become your thinking. So, like I just said, you're not what you think you are, but what you think you are. What you think, you become that thought. You become your thoughts. So people today are losing their minds. In the world, I mean, and some sadly even in the church. Because they don't realize something about the mind. When, when, when Satan, when the devil, attacked Eve... What did he aim at? Her mind. He began to ask her questions. Did God say that? Hath God said? He, be, he began to attack her mind with doubt about God. Did God say that? When the devil attacked the Lord Jesus, what did he aim at? What did he aim at? His mind. If you're the son of God. It's always a question. If. So the devil's weapons are questions. I, I, I just said something powerful that you cannot miss. Every weapon of Satan is a question. Doubt. Question. People questioning the Bible. Questioning the promises. Questioning God's love. Today when you, uh, and that's why you know, I, I don't watch TV anymore. I quit watching TV three years ago because I can't handle it. Because the devil uses that, these networks to, to throw questions. They, look, no one dares to attack Islam on TV. But they attack Christianity. They attack the Lord Jesus. They attack the Bible. Continually. It's the devil who is attacking, 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 attacking. Why? Because, see, we, we Christians just, we, we don't fight back. Muslims do, so I'm proud of them. Thank God that they do. They say, you know what, we're not going to let you do that. But we believers, we Christians are not smart sometimes. 
we, we do not come back with the word. We just say, ah, oh. but they attack continually. Other religions don't let them attack. So here we are being attacked with these questions. So when you, when you deal with the enemy, remember this. Know the word of God. It's the only way you can deal with the attacks. It's the only way you can stop the questions. It's the only way you can say no to the devil. So the enemy aims at what? The mind. With Adam and Eve, he, he aimed at their mind, began to sow distrust in their thinking about the Lord. So in Genesis 3 verse 4 and verse 5, he aimed at the mind and he's still at it. He's still at it. And you know, Paul says we know his devices. We know the way he works. Genesis chapter 3. Let's go to it. So, in verse 1, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. He said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said? Question, did God really say that? That you will not eat, that ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit. But then he threw another question at it. At her, I should say. The serpent said, oh, you won't die. God is lying to you. The mind. And what, what brought about the fall? The mind. If the mind can bring about the fall, the mind can bring about the resurrection of a believer. He starts to think right, and he'll come back to new life. It's all about thinking right. Whosoever ordereth his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of God. Whoever ordereth his, salvation, uh, his conversation aright, will I show his, my salvation, God says in his word. Well, you know, what causes us to say the right thing? The mind. The mind is the battlefield. So, the mind, therefore, the first thing we have to do with our mind is the mind must be saved and the mind must stay saved. Now, you who are born again, when we were saved, our mind was saved. But every single day, you have to keep that mind renewed by the scriptures. That's how you keep it healthy. So how do I receive it? By looking ahead, looking unto Jesus. That's how I, I, re I receive it. I look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, that I would not faint in my mind when I see Jesus, you see? And But how do I keep it? Well, I keep my mind healthy by renewing it. Now, the key is how do I do that? That's what I'm dealing with. That's what I'm dealing with. Um, the mind, first of all, is a defiled machine. All right, let me put it like this. The mind is not saved instantly. The spirit is. The mind is saved continually. Let me say it like this. My spirit was saved when I said, Lord, come into my heart. My mind is still being saved. My body will be saved on resurrection morning. So my spirit was saved. My soul, which is a part of my mind, is being saved. Because what is the soul? The soul is the intellect, emotion, and will. The soul is the intellect, emotion, and will. The soul is what I think. 
the soul is what I feel, and the soul is what I want. That's, that's my soul. I repeat, the soul is what I think, what I feel, and what I want is my soul. Intellect, emotion, will. So, my soul is being saved continually, gradually. My spirit was saved, and it's complete in Jesus now. My spirit is complete in Jesus. But my soul is being saved every single day. My body isn't saved yet. This is still corruption. This body still gets sick and all that stuff. So we have to fight physically. We have to believe God for healing. We have to believe God for righteous living. Because it's the flesh. It's still corruption. One day the body will be saved on resurrection morning. Or when the Lord comes in the rapture. The great catching up will be changed in, a, in the twinkling of an eye, it says. But now, in the meantime, I have to deal with this every day, 24 hours a day. I have to protect this. Because by nature, the mind is defiled. By nature, it's corrupt. By nature, it's, it's blinded by the devil. And by nature, it's hostile towards the Lord. It says so in the Bible. Let's look at these scriptures. Titus 1.15, 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, and Colossians 1.21. Very important. Colossians 1.15. Let's begin with that one. So in Colossians, uh, sorry, in Titus. Let's go to Titus. Uh, then we'll go to Colossians. Titus 1.15 tells me something very important about the mind the mind so if I go to the book of Titus and let me look again please forgive me uh, let's go to the book of Titus 1 and verse 15 and here's what I read unto the pure all things are pure but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure but even their mind and conscience is defiled so by nature our minds are and conscience too are defiled the other scripture I like to, to look at is 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4. 2 Corinthians, I'm still learning this thing by the way, I'm using my iPad, 4.4 uh, 4 says, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. So by nature, they're blind. The mind is blinded. But I want to show you this very important verse, in Colossians 1.21, Colossians, book of Colossians 1 and 21, says this, And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. So the, the unbeliever and we were, in our mind we were enemies, mentally enemies of God, hostile against God. I'm going to say something here. When we were, when we got saved, is it anything we did? Or was it God completely who saved us? giving us the very will to say yes to him and the very faith to believe. I think you know the answer because it's the Lord who gave us the will and the very faith to believe in his salvation because our minds were enemies. How can an, an, an enemy see God? Everything in the flesh hates God. Everything in that evil mind hates God because it's blinded by the devil. 
God reached in and touched your heart and quickened you and gave you faith to say yes to him. Now, what our job today is, is, is what God began, we continue by cooperation with him. Because God is not going to force the Bible on you. God is not going to take his word and force it on your life. He wants you to receive it. See, I believe in predestination, but I believe in our cooperation too. That we have to cooperate with the Lord because the Lord said, follow me. He's not pulling us or forcing us or pushing us to follow him. It's our choice to say yes or no. But he gives us the desire to follow him. He gives us the will to do his pleasure, it says in the Bible. But it's still us that we, we, we have to cooperate with the Lord. So when I receive the word, when I read the Bible, even though God gives me the hunger, I have to open the word and read it. God will not open the Bible for me. I have to do that. I have to look at the word and read it with my own intelligence and mind. So God Almighty, the, the way he salvation began is, he appealed to our intellect. In Isaiah 1.18, it says, Come, let us reason. Reason is intellect. Let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your skin be as scarlet, they'll be whiter than snow. But let's reason. Let's talk about it. All right, now, what, what our job is, and I'm going to finish with this. I'm going to say a few more things, and we're going to continue tomorrow on how to keep it clean. Okay, it's very important what I'm going to say tomorrow. So you can't miss tomorrow, please. We have to change our mind. So man must change his mind. We are required to make a decision and repent and no longer do, do the things that are harming us mentally. No longer look at the things harming us mentally. No longer allow people around us who are harming us mentally. We have to cut the influence out of the world. That worldly influence has got to go. So it's a change of mind. And the change of mind leads us to a whole different course. A whole different destiny. You, you remember what I just said to you earlier. A thought becomes an act. An act becomes a habit. A habit becomes a character. Character becomes a destiny and all that. So I, I have to start changing this. Now, there's a lot of, forgive me for saying this, there's a lot of dirt in people's minds that has to be cleaned up first. That you've got to do some house cleaning first. How can you sow the word till the word has to clean the mind first? Our minds are like a garden. You got to clean it and then plant it. You got to clean it and then plant You got to get all the weeds out, all the dirt out before you can plant it properly. So I'm going to talk to you to, uh, tomorrow about how do I clean my mind? Because when I allow impure thoughts to come into my mind, whether through television or magazines or books or just being around the wrong people, then these things become strongholds. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they are mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. That's in the mind. So the warfare is up here. That's where the battlefield is. And every thought, it says, every imagination, every thought, so we'll deal with that tomorrow. How do I begin the cleaning process? Because when these thoughts come in, they start becoming strongholds. They just pile up, pile up, pile up. How can you, how can you um, have a healthy mind if most of the day it's piling up dirt and then you give Jesus half an hour? Half an hour won't do it. 
because you're giving the, the world way more than that by looking at the wrong things, having the wrong people, reading the wrong things, all that, all that, all that. We have to live in total isolation from the world. Completely cut that out. And, and the Lord said, deny self, deny the flesh. Pick up your cross, follow me. Daily, it's a, it's a daily thing. Look, look, our battle with our mind is daily. Me too, daily. Daily I make decisions. No, I'm not going to do that. No, I don't want to see that person. No, I don't want to talk to that. No, 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 I'm not going to look, look at that. It's every day. It's not just last week. So tomorrow we're going to talk about the cleansing process. How do I begin cleaning it? Because this is vital that I take my time. I can't rush it. I can't rush it. So I think I've said enough today. And then we're going to continue tomorrow. But I want to, I'm, I'm going to just finish with this one line. If you want to live God's way, you have to start thinking God's way. If you want to live God's way, you have to start thinking God's way. And tomorrow I'm going to show you how to first begin the cleansing process of the mind. Then you can plant fresh seed that can affect your tomorrow. And you'll never have a mental breakdown if you do what I tell you tomorrow. Today, people are on medication. Think about the billions of dollars spent on mental health today. People commit suicide. They give up on life. They give up on everything because this thing here has become a stronghold of the devil. People are in prison today. Many are in prison because of this. Probably most of them. Because the devil took hold of their mind to do something stupid or foolish. Demons enter through the mind. So let's get this mind cleaned up so no devil can, uh, can get in. We won't let, shut the door on him. Tomorrow, don't you miss tomorrow. Okay, now before I leave, I'm going to give you a little teaching. I'm not done teaching yet. Because I'm going to take every day five minutes at the end. So don't you shut down on me and leave. I'm going to give you a five-minute teaching on prosperity this week, every day. Just, just five minutes, that's all. I'll actually look at my, at my clock, too. Okay. Second, uh, let me just begin with, with Third John first. Third John 3, 2 to 4, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul. But he gives us the, the key. The key is this. Let's look at Third John. Listen, listen. God wants you to prosper way more than you want to prosper. Way more than you want to prosper. So he says in verse 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper. This in chapter 1. And be in health even as your soul prospers. For I rejoiced greatly that the brethren came and testified of the truth that's in you. Even as you walk in truth. The only way to prosper is to begin filling a life with truth. If you are worried about your finance, begin to fill your heart and mind with truth and prosperity follows. In John 17, 17, it says, Thy word is truth. So, prosperity is the result of truth, the word of God. Prosperity is not evil. There are a lot of people committing evil who don't have a dime. So, prosperity is not evil. And prosperity is not an accident. Prosperity is produced by righteous living. The minute you start living righteously, prosperity is automatic. You don't even have to look for it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you four scriptures and then I'm done. I'm going to pray with you. Proverbs 13, 21. Why don't you read that for me quickly over there and help me? Okay. 
Proverbs 13, 21, Chad. Proverbs 14, 11. Proverbs 15, 6. And Proverbs 22, 4. Four scriptures, okay? Do you have Proverbs 13, 21? Can you read it? Just stand right there and read it out loud. Evil pursueth sinners. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Here, here. Evil pursueth sinners, uh -huh. but to the righteous, good shall be repaid. Aha. Uh -huh. Good always is repaid the righteous. How about Proverbs 14, 11? 14, 11. The house of the wicked shall be overthrown, but the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish. Ah. The, the wicked is overthrown, but the righteous will flourish. How about Proverbs 15, 6? In the house of the righteous is much treasure. Yeah, but, but in the revenues of? The wicked is trouble. Yeah. God is putting a difference between the righteous and the unrighteous. The righteous always prosper while the wicked are losing it. Okay, okay, they have money now. They're about to lose it. Take my word for it. There's, there's coming a wealth transfer as surely as my name is Benny Hinn. Okay, and there's been six wealth transfers already. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, remember please, Joseph, Israel, and Solomon. Six of them have had a wealth transfer. You're number seven. Now read Proverbs 22.4. Proverbs 22.4. Now write these down. You sweet people, write them down. By humility and, and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Yeah. When you obey, one, one more time, one more time. By humility. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Yeah. We have to love the Lord, you see? It's so simple to prosper. Just fall in love with Jesus. <laughs> I love it. Just fall in love with the, with the Lord and, and His Word, and prosperity will come so quickly. And Proverbs 28, 20 says, A faithful man, a faithful man will abound with blessings. So if you're faithful, God will bless you. So simple. And every righteous person, there's one thing about righteous people, they're all givers. You can't be righteous and not give. Psalm 112, verse 9, He scatters abroad, His righteousness endures. He gives, and His righteousness endures. So I'm going to ask you to do what is normal to the believer. I'm going to ask you what comes normal in your, in your life. Give to, to the Lord today again. Just give that seed. Sow that seed and be righteous today. But remember what I said. Prosperity is the result of truth in your life. And righteousness always produces prosperity. And those who are righteous are always giving. Because giving triggers prosperity. Giving triggers the harvest. Like a farmer has to sow to reap. And the land will always produce when we give. We will never, ever get a bad harvest because the land always produces, but we have to give. And there's power in the seed. Oh, so much power in the seed. I was with my wife, Suzanne, not long ago. Went to see her sister's house, and I saw weeds growing and grass growing everywhere through the rock. And I said, oh, look at the grass growing through the cement. She said, yeah, it looks bad. I said, no, look at the grass growing through the cement. She said, what do you mean? I said, the seed is stronger than the cement, Suzanne. No cement can block the harvest. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, bless your people. Meet every need in their life. And Lord, I ask you first for mental health in Jesus' name. I ask you first that everyone be mentally strong and mentally healthy and mentally pure and mentally godly that your word will permeate their minds and lord i pray you'll keep them mentally healthy as they cooperate with you by receiving your precious word and now i rebuke and i come against every demon every demon harassing people's minds in the name of jesus be gone in jesus name let them loose 
Break that stronghold, wonderful Jesus. Break it now in Jesus' name. And let your people be free from that mental oppression. In Jesus' name. Say amen, sweet people. Amen. If you want to send me a prayer request, please feel free. Pastor Benny, BennyHinn.org. Pastor Benny, BennyHinn.org. Okay? And then you can sow your seed today. You can actually text it or just go online. You can do it on the social platform you're watching me on. If not, go to our website or you can text it BHM45777. BHM45777. Don't miss tomorrow. I'm going to show you how to clean this. Amen. Love you all. Bye-bye.